Litter is not only an eyesore, but also a serious threat to wildlife and the environment. While some littering is intentional, much of it occurs accidentally such as when trash falls from garbage trucks or strong winds scatter waste from bins. Machine learning offers a powerful solution for detecting litter, paving the way for future innovations, including autonomous robots capable of cleaning up our surroundings. In this project, we will be showing you how to train a YOLO model to detect common types of litter. First, we'll be downloading the notebook that we'll be using for this project. You can find this page with the written instructions and notebook linked in the description below. From here, you want to scroll all the way down to setting up the Google Colab environment and download the litterdetection.ipynb file. Then on your My Drive, create a folder called Litter Detection and upload the Python notebook. And to open this notebook, all you need to do is double click on it. If you've never used Google Colab before, Google Colab is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run a code block, you can either click on this play button here or click on the cell and then hold Control Enter on your keyboard or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. To add a code block, you can click on this button over here and to delete it, you can click on the trash icon to the right of each cell. Before we run the rest of the code, which we can do here which, under runtime, change runtime type, and make sure it's on T4 GPU and save. And the reason we want to use GPU instead of CPU is because it's much faster and more efficient. And this is important because each image provides a lot of data. Now we want to run all the code blocks under importing libraries. This first code block is installing some dependencies that we'll be using, including Ultralytics, which has the YOLO model that we'll be using and OpenCV, which will allow us to process images. As you can see, installing these dependencies might take a few minutes. Then we want to import these libraries so that we can use them. And then we want to mount the Google Drive. This will allow us to access our Google Drive while inside this notebook environment. The last code block in this section will set up our directories. If we go back to our folder here, we can see that there are two new folders called data and test. If you don't see these folders, you might have to refresh this page. These folders are where you'll be uploading the image data. Now let's start the data collection process. You have the flexibility to choose the type of data you collect, but for this video, we'll focus on three types of trash, cans, cardboard, and plastic. Using a phone or any other type of digital camera, capture at least 100 images of each object. Multiple objects may appear in the same shot. In this case, you don't necessarily need 300 images total for three different objects, but make sure that each object shows up in your images at least 100 times. To clarify, this is 100 images each of a single object, not of each category. So make sure you take the picture of the same can, the same piece of cardboard, and the same piece of plastic. To create a diverse dataset, vary the images in different ways, such as changing the camera angles by rotating yourself around the object, rotating the object itself, using different backgrounds such as gravel, grass, or dirt, stacking or nesting objects. For example, you can put the can inside the cardboard box, varying the zoom level to capture both close-up details and wider shots. These are just a few ideas. Feel free to explore other variations to make your dataset more robust. When you are done taking your images, go back to the litter detection folder on your Google Drive and then you want to go into data and then images and then train and upload all of your images here. Once you have uploaded all of your train images, you want to go back and back and back to your test folder and you want to upload some test videos here. You have some different options for taking videos. The most simple option being just moving the camera around the objects a little bit. You could also pan across the objects. You could also try rotating the object itself during the video. And when you're done taking the videos, just upload it to your litter detection test folder on your Google Drive. Now we'll be labeling our data using this website called cvat.ai and you will need to make an account, but it is completely free. When you log in, it will look pretty empty like this. And then you want to choose create a new project and then I'll name it litter detection. And then you want to add your label by clicking on this button here. And I have three different labels. So I'll be putting can and then continue, cardboard, continue, and also plastic, continue. 
If you accidentally created a label that you do not want, you can click on this cancel button here and then the trash icon next to the label you would like to delete. And after you're done creating your labels, you want to select submit and open. And then you want to click on this plus icon over here and create a new task. I'll call this task litter detection annotation. And then you want to upload your images here. And then you want to select submit and open. And don't worry if this takes a few minutes. It will automatically be brought to a page like this. And to start, you can just click on this job right here. And you can see this is one of the images that I took earlier. You can check our available labels by clicking over here. And we can see that there is can, cardboard, and plastic. Now to start labeling, you can click N on your keyboard and you see we have some red guidelines here. Now you can start labeling it by drawing a box around each object that you want to label in the image. And you can see this is accidentally labeled as can by default. So all you have to do is go back to this objects tabs over here and then change the label here. And then you want to put a box around each object like this and then label it to the correct class. And then one more on this image. And that one's already can. So you can also zoom in like this and then drag these edges so that it can be closer to the object. It is good practice to keep the borders as close to the object as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can save the annotations by clicking on this button here or holding Ctrl S. To move on to the next image, you can click on this arrow button or press F on your keyboard. Now this process will take a bit, so feel free to listen to some music or an audiobook or a podcast while you label your images. When you're done with your annotations, go back to the task tab on your CVAT account. Click on the three buttons over here and then export task dataset. For the format, you want to click on this and then choose YOLO and then OK. And if you go over to the request tab over here, you can see your annotations and then download them. You see a folder that looks like this and then you can just right click on it and then extract all. And then you can click inside the unzipped folder and you can see these other files and this folder with more txt files inside. You can see that each txt file is the name of your image but with a .txt extension instead of .jpg. And if you click on one of these, you can see each class 0, 1, and 2, which corresponds with the class labels that you set earlier. So can is 0, cardboard is 1, and plastic is 2. The x and y coordinate for the center of the box, as well as the height and width. This is how our model will be learning where each object is. Then you want to go back to your drive again, go into data, labels, train, and then you want to add all of the txt files here. When your files are done uploading, you can go back to your Google Colab notebook. Under this section here, number three, preparing the YAML file, you can edit the class labels over here. And you can already see I put zero to can, one to cardboard, and two to plastic. But if you had more classes, you can add them here. So for example, three, if I had glass or for aluminum and so on. Just make sure that it's in the same order that you set over here. Now I'll just take these two out because I don't have them and then run this code block. Now if we go back to the Google Drive and if you don't see the new YAML file yet, you can just refresh it and here it is, a file called config.yaml. This file will let our model know where our images and labels are located, as well as let the model know which classes are included and how the dataset is structured. Now, back to the notebook, we are finally ready to train our model. All you need to do to train this model is to run this code block. This may take about half an hour to a few hours, depending on how much data you have and how fast your internet connection is. So feel free to get a snack, do some chores, watch a show, and we'll be back. You'll know when your model is done training when it has completed 100 out of 100 epochs.
And if you go back to your litter detection folder, you'll see that there's a new folder called run, which is your model weights. And inside this folder, you can check out some interesting graphs. But for the purposes of this project, this will be an optional data analysis. Now back to the notebook. If your runtime has disconnected like mine, and you can tell if you get a pop-up that says the runtime has disconnected or the next code block is unable to run, you don't have to and shouldn't run all the code blocks again, especially this one since this one took me a few hours to run. But you should run all the code blocks under importing libraries again. And to run them all again, you could just go through all the code blocks under this section and run them again. Or you can collapse it and then run them all at once by running this play button here. Now we can finally test our videos. To do so, you want to go into your Google Drive again, go into your test folder, and then check out the name of your video and mine is called image7637.mp4 and go back to your notebook and then type in that exact name. Once you've typed in the file name, you can just run this code block. Depending on how big your video file is, this might take a few minutes. But once it is done running, you can go back to your test folder and see that there's a new file called output and the same name as that other file that you have tested earlier. And if you click on the file, you can view our test results. You can see that in mine, it identified the can and plastic pretty well, but it struggles to identify the cardboard. The carpet is a similar color to the cardboard, so that may be why it has a hard time. If your model is also struggling to identify certain optics, try to figure out why. It could be for many different reasons, such as not enough data, or perhaps this box is in a position that I did not train it on. To test your other videos, you can go back to your folder here, and I'll test my next one, which is the same name except 7638 instead of 7. Go back to your notebook and change the name and simply run it again. Once it's done running, we can go back to the folder and see that there's a new file. Double click on it to view it. If you get a pop-up like this, you can either wait or you can also download it to view it locally on your computer. And if I open up the default media player on my computer, we can see that it does a better job at identifying cardboard this time. Here's another example of the classifier not being 100% perfect. If you want to take steps on improving your model, you can first start with taking more pictures. You could also change the number of epochs here to probably either 150 or maybe even 200 but be careful because this might lead to overfitting instead. And with that, we reached the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions for this project linked in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.